In this video, you will learn about William Patrick Mitchell murdered the entire family of Karen McKenzie and her three children in a gruesome attack at the remote home in Greenough, Western Australia on February 21, 1993, making the site of one of the state's most heinous crimes. The details of the killings were so horrific that they were kept from the public eye. Kenzie died 30 years ago, along with her three children, as a result of what has been described as the worst case of brutal murder in Australia. The crime was so horrific that the Australian government wanted to reinstate the death penalty for such crimes, and the order of secrecy remains, hiding from the public how horrific the killer's actions were. On 21 February 1993, a farmer named William Patrick Mitchell spent a day using cannabis and amphetamines. When he stopped at a farm near Greeno, about 400 kilometers north of Perth, 16-year-old son Karen Daniel came out to greet him. Mitchell approached a teenager and brutally beat him with a tomahawk on the street. There he found Karen sleeping in the living room. He attacks her with an axe, kills her, and then rapes her. Amara and Katrina are sleeping soundly in the bedroom, oblivious to the chaos outside when Mitchell spots them. The murder scene was so horrific that years later experienced homicide detectives are forced to struggle with their memories of what they saw that day. Some were sick of seeing it. Others gave up police work, but they still remembered. Miss Mackenzie knew Mitchell. She refused his invitations many times, including a party a few weeks before the murder. When a friend found Daniel's body in the driveway, the police were informed of the murder. Too scared to go home alone, he called the police. Sergeant Brian Jones arrived first. He was the first officer to learn of the devastation of the family. A wave of fear swept through the state, and a mass manhunt began. The thought of a madman sneaking around with an axe and killing people was a nightmare, not a greeno nightmare. Residents locked their doors, and the police worked to find the killer. The police and forensics officers searched the scene and collected evidence. However, they found a manufactured substance on the bedroom door. The substance was later identified as solvalin cream, and a preserved fingerprint was found in the center of the cream. The door was removed from the crime scene and taken to Perth for examination. However, five weeks passed before Mitchell was arrested. It was only when he was taken to hospital after attempting to injure himself that he finally confessed. The key piece of evidence linking Mitchell to the crime was the hand lotion the perp used. Despite denials by the police and family members, a psychic known as Gabriel, she claims to have helped the investigation by accurately describing the perpetrator and even providing his name and address. Mitchell, along with 72 other known families, were interviewed shortly thereafter and provided fingerprints that matched those found on the bedroom door. According to Crime Investigation Australia, the judge ruled that no one knew exactly how Daniel, Amara, and Katrina were killed. He also pleaded guilty to sexual harassment of Karen and sexual abuse of Amara. When the murders were later reported in the media, details of his crimes were not made public because of their horror. Indeed, some details remained hidden. When the details were finally made public, the public was horrified, and many called for the death penalty to be reinstated in Australia. Mitchell was sentenced to life imprisonment. In his decision, Justice Neville Owen stated that the killings were so horrific that they were almost impossible to describe. The judge said that the four victims were completely innocent and defenseless before the attack and that the killings were accompanied by a horrific kind of sexual activity. Although Mitchell was sentenced to life imprisonment, it was announced that he could be released on parole after 20 years. Under the new law, Mitchell could be imprisoned for the rest of his life. The prosecution argued for a no parole option. William Patrick Mitchell was initially sentenced to 20 years imprisonment, but after this public outcry, his sentence was increased to life imprisonment on appeal. Despite a number of appeals to the Supreme Court, including the decision that Mitchell would never be released, the sentence was overturned on another appeal and parole was reinstated. He will be eligible for parole in 2013. In October 2007, Karen McKenzie's mother, Barbara Merchant, received a threatening letter 
which she believed came from William Patrick Mitchell's partner. The letter said, We found you. People are looking for you. I have a picture of your little girl. Short hair, white shirt, and short skirt. Not bad. I'll see you when I get out of prison. Minister of Corrections Margaret Quirk confirmed that the letter was not sent from the Casuarina High Security Prison, where Mitchell is being held, but she did not rule out the possibility that he had instructed someone else to write it. February 2, 2013 Greeno hatchet killer William Mitchell has indicated that he wishes to be released on parole, which will be considered later this year. However, the victim's sister, Karen McKenzie, vowed to fight to the last to keep Mitchell, who is considered the worst sex offender in the state of Washington behind bars. Mitchell will be eligible for parole later this year after pleading guilty to the murder of 31-year-old Mackenzie and her children, 16-year-old Danny, 7-year-old Amara, and 5-year-old Katrina in February 1993. Today, 30 years after his sister's death, Evelyn Clough recalls the painful moments after Mitchell's visit to prison in 2010. I asked him if he wanted parole, and he said, I'd lie if I said I didn't want parole, he said. And I said to him, as long as I live and breathe, I will do everything in my power to keep you behind bars. And he said he could understand it. Clough, who hopes to negotiate a parole hearing with Attorney General Michael Mission, received a letter last week informing her that Mitchell is eligible for a judicial review of his sentence in September. She said she was concerned that Mitchell, considered a model prisoner, had been preparing for release into the community since he was transferred to Banbury Regional Prison, a medium security prison, in 2009. If he is released, he will live the rest of his life. He's only 44 years old. He's still young enough to take everything he stole from my sister, from my niece, from my nephew. Mitchell interfered with Mackenzie's body and sexually assaulted Amara, who then began taking drugs. The details of the child's murder were deemed too gruesome to publish. Mitchell's parole hearing took place in 2013. Before the hearing, a petition against his release appeared online and garnered more than 1,500 signatures. In October of that year, Mitchell had a hearing, and a report was sent to Washington State Attorney General Michael Mitchin. He had to decide whether Mitchell should be released. Ultimately, he decided Mitchell should not be released. In 2016, Mitchell wanted to be released on parole. At that time, a petition against his release appeared online, garnering more than 18,000 signatures. Sister Karen wrote a letter to the parole board. Once again, Mitchell was denied parole and was to be released in 2019. In 2018, however, a new law will be introduced that says mass and serial killers will not be considered for parole for six years. Karen's sister, Evelyn, said she would fight to the death to keep Mitchell behind bars. Mitchell knew what I was thinking. I told him I would do everything I could to keep him in jail while I was still breathing.